Hello viewers, Super GT here, welcome back. So, this week's uh, weekly race is not the finest selection, it must be said, but uh, race B does give us the opportunity in Group 3 at Suzuka to try out this, the BMW M3. It's a car I have yet to try in Group 3, so I don't know how good it is. We're going to find out over the course of this video. So, the race, Suzuka, four laps. I put in uh, a couple of practice laps or qualifying laps and that has put us second on the grid for this one. So you can see they're surrounded by the 911. The 911 of course being one of the most popular and fastest cars in Group 3. So if I can sort of keep my position here then uh, that would be very very good indeed. So the leader moving over to the right hand side trying to break that toe but I'm going to follow him across and see just how much I've gained already into turn one. So Suzuka here, difficult circuit, uh, a great challenge, every type of corner uh, during the course of the lap. And of course it has it has the crossover, the figure of eight configuration. So here we go then, let's see how well this car performs. So just just a word of note, should we say. This performance here, or I was playing here after returning from Forza RC, I uh, had three nights out in a row, fairly hungover. It was cold. It's cold. It's cold in England now. It's nearly the end of October. Well, it is the end of October. So, my racing driver excuse is my hands are cold. If anything bad happens, my hands are cold. And that reduces performance, of course. So, uh, pulling up to the back of the 911 goes a little bit too deep into the hairpin and as we come round towards Spoon really firmly tucked into the slipstream I'm going to look for the move not quite going to do a Sebastian Vettel and wipe myself out I'm going to stick behind we've still got three more laps after this one although it must be said that a four lap race isn't very long at all. It is it is very much a sprint race. Qualifying is very important. And if you want to make your way through the pack, if you're a bit further behind, then you do really need to be very quick about it. Looking around the outside of 130R, that's basically suicide to attempt going around the outside there. So just backing out into the chicane. And again, not quite close enough, so just let him turn in. And very, very close to the back of him, onto the main straight. Is there potential here? for a pass into turn one. We're going to tuck into the slipstream. He moves over to the right hand side. I'm going to follow him across back towards the left at the beginning of lap two. Firmly in the sucking zone now into the inside line. He's given me plenty of space to go up the inside into the lead. I'm surprised he didn't really carry more speed through the first turn. But again, it's very easy to get sucked off here at Suzuka. So that is something you do have to bear in mind, of course as you race around the famous circuit here. So into the lead. That is a solid start so far for the BMW M3. And my main analysis of the way that it drives is that it's actually very, very stable indeed. You actually get on the throttle very early, which is useful around Suzuka. Now I'm gonna cut this story quite short here because, well, well, here's my, my bottle job, which was absolutely inevitable. It always happens. And uh, again, my, my main excuse was my hands were cold and I did it again, I, I just completely turned off and made just stupid mistakes in a race that I really should have won because well clearly uh, moving to the lead very quickly and then staying there until lap 3 but in the end I, I was 4th, it was, it was just a stupid race really and a bad performance first race back on the game for a while that is my main excuse as well so just all the excuses are coming out I've got my book on standby my excuses book so I'm gonna go again here starting seventh it's actually a really awkward start when you start seventh here because you're they start you on the chicane so it's very really easy to crash instantly but anyway starting seventh this time qualifying's really close this is I mean this is the best of the three daily races or weekly races so this is where most people are gonna be attempting to set good lap times and to have a good race group three is I think probably one of the most popular classes in the game so it's always going to be harder to get a group. grid slot as someone spinning around. It's Alex Ver is actually the guy who won the last race. Or uh, I was challenging for the last race. So now up into sixth. 
place and uh, gaining one position. You see already how much of a gap there is between fourth and third and unless they start fighting up front it's really just going to be a battle for fourth here. Uh, in, a, in a four lap race it's, there's just not enough time. When everyone's so evenly matched there's not enough time to gain or to claw, to claw back three seconds is just not possible really. Unless of course people start making mistakes. I mean I made a mistake it's very much possible that other people can do the same. Into Spoon for the first time of this race and uh, hold up here behind two 911s uh, and again the de facto choice of, of group three that 911 just a great all-rounder very fast and uh, not the easiest to drive but but up there certainly up towards 130R and I'm gonna just graze the apex nicely and I sense that I've got a nice run here momentum into the chicane I'm gonna look around the outside go deep on the brakes try to go around him he doesn't really turn in. Hint of a Rosberg there. And he keeps his position, so I stay sick for now. But again, we can just tuck into that slipstream down the main straight. It's always a bit harder when you're the third person in the train because the person in second is getting the toe as well. So you're not going to gain quite as much. Although I am gaining here, looking up the inside, not quite going to happen. And I'm not going to attempt it around the outside this time around. Frenchman out of nowhere in the pink machine get a bit of contact through turn two but into turn three into the S's he doesn't really challenge it so end of lap two now again through 130 are taking it nicely the car really rooted to the ground into the chicane not going to change it this time I'm going to get a better run though with a wider entry into the final part of that chicane so let's see if I can make the most of that as we come down the main straight to cross the line half of the race done and We've definitely got a run here. We're alongside, but on the wrong side, going into turn one. Yellow flag, someone has had an incident, and I've just gone really deep. Totally misjudged it. It's really sketchy at the best of times going into there, because you really have to carry a lot of speed in to maximise the lap time. And just that yellow flag popped up at exactly the wrong moment. Something I've been guilty of recently, looking at the wrong thing at the wrong time. So I just looked at that, that yellow flag that popped up. Uh, exactly the wrong moment. That guy there could not resist getting sucked off and it was quite a prolonged suck as well so I went up to 8th but I mean that's no real consolation given that I started 6th a bit further ahead or 7th sorry so I suppose it's not too bad but I should have finished up a lot higher than that so qualifying as I, as I kind of mentioned there I touched on it briefly very important in this race because this is where most people are going to be setting their best, best times this is the race that most people are going to be doing this week so I'm going to really try to improve on my 201.3. So through turn one, go deep. You have to go. You have to really run the risk of getting sucked off through turn one. But it gives you the better entry, and the better exit through turn two. So now the challenge of the S's. You really have to maximise the track width here. Through this left hand here, you have to really aim for the green on the inside, the little astro turf beyond the curb. Just miss it. Uh, so maybe lost a tenth or two there. Through Dunlop. The car just really planted, and this is the main thing I was saying about it. You can really get on the throttle very early, and there's there's very little drama. So this car's actually very good. This is a very good Group 3 car. I don't know how good it is on fuel and tyres, so should um, Group 3 come up in uh, Daily Race C, where you require fuel saving and, and tyre management, then it might be a different story. We don't know exactly how good it is yet, but uh, as it stands, just for outright speed, when tyres and fuel aren't a thing then it seems very very good indeed up to Spoon, breaking just before that little uh, pathway the tarmac pathway on the right hand side powering through the middle of the apex and then turning left again down to second gear on the throttle as early as you can but it can get very sketchy through there as you're still turning while you're accelerating that's the main thing of Suzuka a lot of the time you're turning while you're accelerating away out of the turn and you need a car with good stability and this certainly has that into the final chicane you could really be quite liberal on the curbs and uh, we've gone through there nicely P uh, perhaps could have uh, accelerated a little bit earlier uh, just keep into the right hand side the shortest line to the finish line and uh, there it is a 2 or well, two minutes 0.8 so improving by half a second although that wasn't a perfect lap and uh, definitely could have gone a little bit better because you can see here just how close it is if I had gone two temps faster I might have been second on the grid that is how close it is but I'm down here again in sixth 
plays. So, I've got my work cut out here to have a good result. This is the last race of the video and I'm not going to cut anything because honestly this is one of the best races I have ever been part of. You do not want to miss a thing here. So, here we go then, massive gap either side, a massive gulf of I've got about a two second gap ahead and behind at the moment for some weird reason but uh, these two guys in the Porsches up ahead, actually one is a Mercedes and the other guy in the Porsche, having a nice ding dong battle already and uh, I did sense, I did spot that one of them kind of uh, braked a little bit too late into the first turn and pushed the other one wide so a bit of animosity between the, the pair ahead of me which I must be careful about I don't want to be in between, <laughs> you know I don't want to be the meat in an angry driver sandwich, that is not a good idea at all. So winding round Dunlop Curve into Degna 1, braking and turning just before the 50 board. Mercedes driver all over the place and slamming across Degna 2 with an intense line. Coming up towards the hairpin then for the first time. 3.8 seconds off the lead at this moment. And the leader ahead, or well, the guy ahead, is going to come in for a savage revenge hit out of nowhere. I've gone up two positions and I'm going to go up three positions now. The Lexus, I don't know what that was, maybe an unforced error on the exit of the hairpin and that is a, a, an amazing five seconds for me. I gained three positions as a result of um, a series of errors and revenge hits. So finding myself now in third with second how far ahead? 1.7 seconds. We've got three laps to try and catch that up. He's driving the Ferrari, so Ferrari versus BMW here at Suzuka, the leader nearly four seconds ahead, driving the Porsche 911, so a series of mistakes there, or well, not always mistakes I suppose, uh, well you could call a massive revenge hit a mistake, because well you die as a result, or you know your race is over. So again out of that of course, up into third. Now this is, I mean just looking at the qualifying times, um, when the guy in second who's now actually just right behind me does a time only two temps faster, which I think I could have done, it, it, it kind of tells me that I should, I mean I could easily be in this kind of position. Sometimes uh, if, the, if the qualifying times are, are quite spread and you get uh, and you overtake some of the faster people ahead of you sometimes they're going to be coming straight back past you because they are simply faster but in this case here yes they were faster in qualifying but I think in a race it's going to be roughly equal because that, that, you know, that two temps gap is not big at all so through Dunlop curve and again up towards Dunlop I'm sorry Dunlop into Dunlop Dunlop into Degna uh, that's one and here's two a little bit wide of the second apex and on the exit, you just want to use the light green Astro. If you drive onto the darker green Astro, you lose kind of traction and you do not get as good acceleration. So that's about as far wide as you want to go. So just uh, gaining really a little bit on this lap, up uh, the gap down, sorry, to 1.1. The, the gap to the leader up to 4.5. So the, the leader very, very quick indeed. His qualifying time was off 1.59. So. He's, he's about a second faster in qualifying, which is a very, very, very fast lap. But he did make a mistake, actually, in the previous race. So we'll see how that one develops. Still on the tail of the Ferrari. Still got two more laps to go. I've gained about half a second on this lap. And should I do that twice more, uh, I'll only be one-tenth away from the guy in second. The driver behind in uh, the Lexus the gap now up to 1.4. It's actually a really nice mix of cars here as I, I really do go quite uh, liberal uh, all over that first curve and I'm surprised I didn't get a penalty to be honest. But I was going to say that the, the car choice is fairly mixed for this race. We've got a Mercedes, a Ferrari, a BMW, a couple of Porsches and a Lexus. So a fair, a fair range of cars being employed here in the, in the top of this race. So that's good to see. It's good to see that uh, a lot of cars are being used and that they can be competitive. So into the S's, the gap below a second uh, briefly. So we are definitely quicker than this guy uh, up ahead, the German in the Ferrari. And uh, just dropping away now is Radical Velox. Uh, he's now down to fifth behind. So the gap behind, 2.3 seconds, bit of breathing space behind. So now I can really avert my attention forwards. I don't have to think about defending at all at this moment. 
it's really about me. I'm trying to catch up with Mini Maniac, who is still putting in the laps, but I do sense that I'm just a couple of tenths per lap quicker. Gap down to 0.7 or below now, and I've gone a quarter of a second faster than my previous lap. So into the hairpin, down to first gear, and you're going to accelerate very quickly and dart up to second gear very quickly. Indeed, just to get maximum acceleration. Now just riding on board with the leader here, coming up towards Spoon, and he's just going to get pulled wide by the Suck Astro into the gravel. He's going to get reset, sent back in time. And that, of course, has massive repercussions in this race, because now this battle for second is now the battle for first. So the fastest driver delivering amazing lap times in this race, but then also you run the risk of, well, getting sucked wide. And the tables have really turned in this race and in this video. At the start of the video, I was the absolute bottle job. I was the Sebastian Vettel of the video. But now the tables have really turned and I seem to be the one in form, not making many mistakes here. It's taken me a couple of races to settle down to, to you know, get used to this car, for my radiator to warm up my room so my fingers aren't so bloody cold. So there we go, uh, 201.0 across the line. Mr. Mini Maniac here, going very defensive. I'm looking up the inside into turn one, it's not going to happen. This is the final lap now. One lap left to go. Can I snatch an unlikely victory at Suzuka from sixth place on the grid? In only a four lap race, this would be quite sensational if this can happen. Through the S's, missing my apex there. Through the left, hitting it a little bit better through this time. But the Ferrari seems to have gathered his thoughts and uh, re recollected his talent as he seems to have had a good first sector. The gap back up to 0.6 after being way below that into turn one. So through Degner's, let's see if he takes them quite nicely. I'm a little bit wide through one into two, turning in a little bit later than I normally would, and actually taking quite a good line, gap 0.7, I need it to be ideally 0.6, so I can be within the slipstream range as we go up towards Spoon Curve, the the Spaniard behind 1.1 seconds, so he could feature, although I think he's left a little bit too late here, he should have won the race, like I perhaps should have won the first race in this video, but he's, he's kind of thrown that opportunity away. So the gap down to 0.5, I was just about within slipstream range, up towards Spoon, he's had a hint of a, a mistake there, through the middle of the corner, and just coming through the exit, again trying to get on the throttle so early, and the car kind of sketchy on the way out, I'm firmly within the slipstream zone now, uh, 0.5 seconds, just half a second off, is there an opportunity, it looks like I'm too far back really to go for a move, he's gone very wide, he's been pulled wide beyond the Astro turf, re rejoining the circuit, just about getting the brakes on enough, but he's going to make a mistake through the middle of the apex, I've gone to the left hand side, darted underneath him on the way out, I'm into the lead, he's sliding, and I'm going to come through to win the race at the last possible moment, and snatch victory away from the German with, well, one turn left to go, a couple of seconds left in the race, going from second to first, at the l latest possible opportunity and pulling off a sensational sixth to first and wow all the f all five drivers ahead of me at the start all of them made some sort of mistake and i don't think i really made any or n no significant errors there's the results there the the spaniard the fastest driver but not consistent enough and ultimately one of my finer victories my 70th on the game let me know your thoughts i hope you enjoyed the video as always guys I shall see you next time. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.